Welcome to More Than A Few Words, a marketing conversation for business owners. This is your host, Lorraine Ball. And as you're trying to stand out from the crowd and be recognized as a subject matter authority, you actually have to know something that other people don't. And one of the best ways to gain that information is to conduct a survey or a study and to talk about how to do that. I am going to be joined by Mickey Kennedy. And what you should know about Mickey is that he is an expert at helping small businesses, authors, and startups increase their visibility and credibility through tier one press release distribution. He founded e-releases 25 years ago when he realized that small businesses desperately need a press release service they can actually afford giving them access to media and a national newswire, all with a personal touch. Mickey, welcome to the show. Well, thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. And for those of you that are listening and kind of recognize Mickey's name, he was a guest here a few years ago, and there'll be a link to our original conversation in the show notes. But today, I want to tackle this topic of studies and surveys and I guess my first question is, how do you use it to get noticed? Sure. So uh, when it comes to the media, they love numbers, they love data, and there's nothing better than fresh data. So uh, basically what I recommend is that someone do an industry a survey within their industry. And uh, I usually do 16 questions uh, four questions per page in Survey Monkey, and on the final page, you can make one or two of those questions a little left field, odd question. Um, the great thing is if they've completed three the three previous pages, you've got twelve responses, even if that throws them off. But uh, sometimes those fun questions can really go places, and I've I've had some really good success with that. Um, you know, in the case of what is a left field question uh, for uh, a, a local auto repair shop in Pennsylvania uh, that was doing a survey of other independent uh, auto mechanics across the nation, uh, it was what's the strangest thing a customer left in their car while being repaired. <laughs> and it was an open field. None of the answers were statistically relevant, uh, but they were fun. And so uh, we ended up going with that. Um, uh, we put I always recommend you put all the questions and responses on a page on your website. It's going to be a survey resource page. Put your quotes on that page of, you know, uh, what you feel are, are is meaningful. And when you do the press release, you're going to focus on basically just one or two of those questions and uh, refer them to the survey uh, uh, and the responses back on your page. A good journalist will go there. Maybe they'll find another story that you didn't think of uh, with a different angle. Um, so it's just a great resource to have that page. So the next question I get from people is, well, I don't know a lot of people in my industry to survey. And mm -hmm. the, the great thing is you don't need to know. Um, in, in the case of that auto repair shop, um, I, I asked if they belong to any trade associations and they go, oh yeah, we, we, we throw $80 a year to this independent uh, auto repair trade association. And I was like, well, let's see how big they are. And I think they had over 1100 members. And I was like, that's a good candidate. So um, what I suggest is you uh, uh, take that link uh, from SurveyMonkey, uh, send it to them in an email and say, hey, um, I have uh, recently uh, built a survey and I plan on, uh, um, you know, getting responses and building out a press release that I'll issue over the wire. And if you're willing to partner with me and send this out to your members, I will mention you in that press release going out over the wire. The great thing is these small and independent trade associations don't get any media attention. It's the large trade associations mm -hmm. uh, that have their own PR people and will never cooperate with you in something like this. Uh, they get all the media attention. So uh, they often see it as a win-win. I've had a couple push back and say, could we co-brand the survey? I don't see a downside unless they want to start getting involved with, you know, changing the questions and just, you know, making the whole thing difficult. But uh, many times, you know, they're they're lean and small enough. They just see this as an opportunity to get a mention, uh, hopefully, in uh, an article. So, uh, so you, well, let, let me ask you a couple of questions about that, because a lot of what you're talking about is very geared to establishing me as an expert 
surveying other people in my industry, but how do I then maybe use that information to get customers to take me more seriously? Because at the end of the day, isn't that really what it's about? Correct. So uh, in, in, in this case, you're going to uh, get the results from the survey. You're looking for at least 100. If you don't get it, you can circle back to the trade association and say, say, we only got 60. Could you do a push in social media, maybe another email send? They often want to see this succeed. So they'll, they'll often work with you to get it out there. Um, you're going to look at the results, figure out what what's the biggest aha moment here? What's the most shocking or surprising thing? Uh, and you're going to focus your press release on that. Maybe there's room for a secondary result in there. And uh, you're going to put an amazing quote of why you felt uh, the results turned out that way in regards to that question. You're putting the analysis there because you're the expert. You're the author of the survey. And you send that out. And uh, generally, when my customers do this, they get 8 to 14 articles uh, uh, that that are there. Then you take those articles, you put them on your website, you uh, download them and take screenshots because guess what? Uh, newspapers and news organizations change content management systems. It seems like every three years <laughs> and they throw out all of the old articles. And so uh, record these so you, you have them, but take the links, share them on social media, uh, put them in your newsletter, uh, you know, take the logos from these places and and put them on your website. Uh, these are credibility indicators. Um, so your your leads, let's say you, you lose, you know, you only convert about eight percent of your leads. Maybe putting this in front of them, getting them to see, wow, you know, these guys are experts. They just did this really cool survey. This isn't like, yeah, I'm I'm considering two companies and this other company is not doing anything like that. Mm -hmm. And so it really makes them, uh, get, you know, gives you the perception uh, of being someone who understands the industry well. And as a result, you know, that, that 10% conversion rate can climb to 14, 16, 17% by putting that authority in front of them. Because when people read articles and see you in print, it's a huge credibility boost. It is uh, uh, one of those things. It's a signal of trust. Um, mm -hmm. You know, a journalist has given that social proof of choosing to write about you. And again, you're you're the uh, the person who created this data. It, it's just it's just so much authority there. And as a result, uh, you know, putting this in front of people, both leads and existing customers, uh, will will help you convert better and keep customers uh, from leaving. There's always churn because people are always like, you know, hey, we've been with this company three years. Maybe we should try someone else just to see if we've been using mm -hmm. the right person. And they mm -hmm. see something like that and they're just like, eh, we're definitely with the right person. I mean, they're 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 uh, much more of an expert than I thought they were. You know, they're mm -hmm. they're getting in articles and things like that. So um, that that is a huge uh, uh, authority booster. Um, I had a carpet company, New Jersey, did this. They got in a bunch of uh, carpet and floor uh, covering trade publications, and uh, you know, I. I I, I told them I was worried because their customers don't read those, uh, but they put together a big brag book of about 30 of these clippings. Um, it, it did include also their local newspaper and New Jersey magazine, which was important to them. Mm -hmm. And they just thumb through it when they're giving someone a quote saying, look, we've been picked up in floor uh, covering weekly floor trades uh, uh, today, you know, just one publication after another local newspaper, New Jersey magazine. And then they just say, Hey, we may not come in the cheapest, but uh, you know, we're nationally recognized recognized and we know what we're doing and you won't have to worry about moving all your furniture out of the room to have your carpet restretched in two years because we do it right from the beginning and people That's just awesome. say you know it's a little bit more but I, I want to just go with them it increased their conversion rate 17 percent with all in-home consultations by adding that one to two minute you know just looking at these articles not even reading them just looking at the headlines and seeing them there that that is such those are both such good examples and they are examples for businesses that i don't think traditionally think of themselves as trying to be subject matter experts you know you get a lot of coaches and consultants and they kind of get this whole survey thing but this is really innovative for home service professionals kind of it is a wonderful way for them to separate themselves in what is frequently considered 
a commodity purchase. I mean, an air conditioner is an air conditioner is an air conditioner. And all of a sudden, well, the product is the same, but the people aren't. Yeah, it's, it's a great way to stand out in any industry. There are so many books being published. And sometimes I have authors come to me who just tried PR and it didn't work. And they're in an industry where I think a survey would work. And I'm like, you will stand out here. And every article will mention, you know, a, a, a quote by you says so-and-so author of, and that's a great way to position you as an expert with that book and get it out there. So it applies to so many different industries and so few people are going through the effort of this. And the way I broke it down, it's very doable by most people. You don't Absolutely. have to be an expert. Uh, the, the biggest thing is coming up with 16 questions that are kind of timely and mm -hmm. uh, maybe looking at trends that are going on mm -hmm. in your industry or just questions you would ask other people in your industry if you bumped into them at a conference you know, or a trade show saying, hey, have you noticed lately it seems like this is happening in our industry? That could be a great question. And uh, yeah, it's just a matter of getting the answers and, and picking uh, which one you think is going to surprise the industry most. Fantastic. Well, Mickey, once again, uh, you have just dropped a ton of great information. I am so glad you've popped back to join me and be a part of the show again. Thank you. You're very welcome. And for anybody who uh, wants to follow along how to do a survey, as well as several strategic uh, press release ideas that I have. I have a free masterclass that's, you know, built for the TikTok era, less than an hour long. And uh, I guarantee you'll go through it and walk away with six to 12 good newsworthy ideas for your business that you would have never thought of otherwise. And it's at ereleases.com slash plan, P-L-A-N, completely free. Uh, and uh, I, I guarantee you'll be able to run laps around other marketers with all the knowledge that's there. And I feel like it's a, a great place for someone to start. Fantastic. I will have a link in the show notes. So in case you weren't writing fast enough, just look in the show notes and you'll find it. Thanks, Mickey. You're very welcome. And if you've enjoyed this conversation and would like to find other resources for your business, look for MTFW wherever you listen to podcasts. Subscribe to our newsletter so you get all of the updates. This has been another episode of More Than A Few Words. Thanks for listening.